Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Winter Circle Sports Betting Podcast on the Winter Circle Sports Betting Channel, brought to you by GamblersWorld.net, where you'll find 10 of the finest handicappers in the country, and we guarantee all our selections there, folks, simply means if you don't win, you don't make a profit on any single game or multi-game daily package or subscription plan of 30 days or fewer, we will credit your account back the exact amount of your purchase price. I'm joined today, I'm Ross Benjamin, by the way, and I'm joined today by Mr. Jesse Shule and Mr. Sean Higgs. It is Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, excuse me, June the 5th, and uh, we're going to be talking game one of the NBA Finals, which goes tomorrow night. Uh, We'll each have a pick in that game, and there'll be three separate categories, as Jesse will be giving out a prop. Sean likes to side in this game, and I have a total in the first half in this contest, so you want to stay tuned for that. But before we get going, folks, real important, um, give us a like on these videos. Just a small token of your appreciation for the time, work, and effort that we put in uh, to bringing you a quality podcast five times a week. And those likes go a long way with our owner, and uh, it helps keep these videos free and not pay videos. So, Please give us a like. We really deeply appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Winter Circle Sports Betting Channel. And uh, click on that black subscribe button if you're on your PC. Click on the WC logo. And also uh, take a second extra to go into your YouTube settings and click on the alert notification bell for the Winter Circle Sports Betting Channel. And you'll be notified immediately upon any of our uh, five podcasts weekly going up on this channel. I want to thank Mr. Sean Higgs as he did a tremendous job. I was very impressed with his work the last two days, filling in as a host for me. Uh, A lot of things that I have to discuss with you going forward, folks, but I don't think today is the time to do that. But, Sean, anyway, how are you, my friend? I am good. Tough tough filling the the raw shoes. People are like, where's Ross? We wanted... We wanted Seth to put your face on a milk carton for yesterday's <laughs> show and have yeah. you like the the bad lieutenant on a milk cart in between me and Jesse and just play like little sound bites of Ross like <laughs> yelling about whatever. Just little sound bite here and there of just the Ross on a milk carton. But you know, I was a little late. We were a little late to the party trying to get that done. That would have been pretty funny though. <laughs> it would have been hilarious, actually. But great job, buddy. Really appreciate Thanks. it, man. And uh the show didn't miss a beat, and I didn't expect anything less. So, Jesse, how are you, my man? Doing all right, guys. Uh, been slim pickings the last few days with nothing but baseball and not even full cards of baseball. It's been tough to even get out one game a day, but at least they've been winning. A couple, couple days in a row now delivering winners, uh, which is always nice. And But really looking forward to getting back and talking about the NBA. Uh, only a few games left, I guess, now that we're – into the finals, but I'm excited about it. I, I really can't wait to dig in. Sean, five guys got suspended uh, yesterday for a uh, legal act. Well, not a legal activity because betting legally is, is uh, pretty much uh, across the board in the United States right now, but betting on their specific sport in which they play in any comments. Um, I want to blame my interpreter. Seems to be the way to go. <laughs> anyway, oh uh, yeah, oh that's we can't we can't go that route, huh? We can't. Uh... Yeah, you get the sense <laughs> the sensitivity these days. You know the the well, the one guy who's banned, right? The the guy on San Diego gets banned, and he was like a top ten prospect in their system. Yeah, and apparently he hit what four percent of his bets, four point three percent of his bets. He hit he he should be on ESPN. On, on on the on the panel show, he'll he'll fit right into the oh yeah NFL Network. Like, who do we got Sunday night? The entire panel is on one team. He'll fit right in over there. That he'll be great on on one of those channels. Yeah, panel and Ch- my buddy Chip Cherimbus would say, watch that show and go go the opposite. Write everything they write down, and and the rest of these cable shows out there with these kids that uh, don't have experience in handicapping, but they got a Bachelor of Arts degree in mass communications they can't get a damn job on any network uh being a sports anchor hey you know what gambling's legal do some research for the next couple months we'll put you on a gambling show give me a break you know chip would tell you listen to all them shows write down what they have take a consensus of whatever the most uh picks are on a certain team or certain teams and go the opposite way ross i'm telling you 
and I'm not so sure he's wrong there. But Jesse, uh, and run, run fast on that, Ross. I mean, yeah. you know, like the old, you know, New York Post Daily News on a Thursday, they'd have a list of like 10 guys each paper, like 10, 15 guys, and all their picks for NFL weekend. I would go in the 90s, I'd go through that, and whenever it was like 10 or more on one game, I'd just go opposite and probably hit about 57%. Oh, yeah, year. I wouldn't even have to think about it. It was just so blatantly a favorites, 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 yeah. favorites. Yeah, you know, I don't really like to do that. You know what I mean? It does make sense. Uh, I did bring it up with Chip. Uh, he's been doing that for years, and that's not the only premise of what he does when it comes to sports handicapping, but it's a foundational point for him. And, and what you if you're just, already on a Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night game, and you like it, and all of a sudden you see all those bozos come out and everybody's on your side, I know I've done it. I was in Lansing, we were at Harris, and everyone was on one side Sunday night, and I had, I'm like, oh, well, we got to stop. She's like, oh, I thought we were cheering. I was like, oh, no, no, that's, that's totally changed now since all these guys. We got to go out. And sure enough, it was a no doubter the other way. When they all I'll tell out. you who the worst one is, is Charles Barkley. I, I guess yeah, he, he likes good good money, man. and he's terrible. Anyway, go ahead, Jess. Yeah, I was going to say the guys on TNT uh, inside the NBA, they're pretty bad. Uh, Barkley and, and Shaq, both with some horrible hot takes. Stephen A. Smith is another guy, hot take master, that's quite often dead wrong. Um, you know, you, you got to listen to us guys because I tell you what, we're not here because we look good on TV. Just look at us. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt about it. Thank you, Jesse. We appreciate that from me and Sean. Anyway, uh, you're, you send that apple over and I'll send you your star on your forehead. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, uh, Sean, the bottom line is, is that uh, people don't understand. We've been doing it for years. This is our livelihood. Uh, you know, when we're, we go, we're going good on this channel, it always amazes me that somebody comes in and puts up five of their picks like it's one of these old uh, – forums that used to be in the old days that were very popular where everybody would chime in with all their picks and, and, you know, folks, you know, if we're doing well, it, it would be not very intelligent to fade us. Somebody faded Jesse the other day. And like I said, uh, I stole a line from uh, Rocky four, I believe it was with the, the episode with uh, Ivan Drago, where when they went to the center of the ring and uh, they uh, touched gloves uh, he's, he looked at Rocky and he said, you will lose. And uh, that's exactly <laughs> what happened. Anyway. Uh, all Do you right. Know let's that? Do you know what? that the guy who played him, Dolph Lundgren, has like a physics degree or some kind of crazy? Yeah. He's not just some guy who's like, I'm an actor. He's actually got you know, some. No, Sean, oh, when you saw those workouts by Dolph Lundgren, and I know some of you are getting agitated because we're going off, at you, but this <laughs> is a podcast folks it's not a free pick video uh here's your pick and uh we're done in three minutes so in any event um when you saw how Dolph Lundgren who played Ivan Drago in that movie they showed all his workouts and the shots that was not far off from what went on in the old Soviet Union back in the days you know I I like the how they broke it down where he was like running up the treadmill and Rocky was like running up the mountain like you can do like yeah. I, I don't know the exact term. Uh, what is it called, Jess? When you're I, I'm doing push-ups instead of isometrics. Like, you're using your own body weight kind of stuff. Isometrics, isn't it, Jesse? As as opposed to, uh, I mean, what, again, what makes you guys think I'm going to know the answer to this? No, because well, you're benching 250 like you're a linebacker, bro. Yeah, we should well, put like you. like a meathead that doesn't know what he's doing though. But uh... engineering, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get to the picks because I know a lot of people out there are going, okay, boys, enough. And that's okay. But I hope you find us entertaining as well as educational and knowledgeable as well. So the latter two, we definitely are. <laughs> the first one, it's up for debate, but we do our <laughs> best. In any event, Jesse, uh, you have a player prop here in game one of the NBA Finals, which involves Derek Lively the second and uh Jesse's yeah, got a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> must, Somebody, must be the girlfriend. Je <laughs> Jesse, Where are you? Yeah, it's like, Jesse, who do you like before you give it out on the air? Anyway, go ahead. Why aren't you in bed? Yeah, you know, either he's Anyways. watching a soccer game or he's taking phone calls while we're on the air. In any event. Jesus. 
Are you, you are you prepared or you want Sean to go first? No, no, I'll go first. So I got more than one prop for you. I got uh and I got a Rossism, a Ross Benjaminism oh, for you. Uh, numbers don't lie and liars don't figure. And the numbers tell me that Kyrie Irving is a better three point shooter than Jason Tatum. And I know I've been saying a lot of negative things about Tatum lately, but I just, I, I feel like he's a guy that the NBA wants to hype up. He's a decent player. Don't, don't get me wrong, but I don't think he's super, the absolute superstar uh, level. And uh, he's been struggling from beyond the arc in these playoffs. He's hitting just 29% in the postseason. He's exactly 29 for 100, 100 attempts, 29 makes. That's 29%. He's averaging 2.07 makes per game. And they, he's attempting 7.14 attempts per game in the postseason. Kyrie Irving comes in hitting 42% from beyond the arc. He's 45. Oh, man. I don't even. <laughs> All right. What I'm going to do. We apologize, folks. Jesse's a popular guy. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Kyrie Irving, you were saying, and I'm interested to hear what his average attempts are during the postseason. So, he's averaging fewer attempts. He's averaging 6.3 attempts per game, and uh, but he's hitting 42%, 45 of 107, and averaging 2.65 makes per game. So he's, uh, you know, Jesus. All right. Let, I, just, I, mean, I just want you to get. How about turning yeah, your phone get, off? Yeah, well, I've got two of them, and they're kind of old, and I'm trying to turn them off. They're just, they're they're not doing it. All right. So I'm I'm. Taking Answer it. the call. It's what time is it over there for you? It's two a.m., right? Yeah. Well, there's only one person that would call me like this and continue to call, and it's my father, and he's very old, and yeah. he's just very impatient, and he would just keep on calling and calling. Okay. He, yeah, it's okay. it's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, it's that happens. Put it on mute. Answer the call. I'll run down my game, and then we'll All right, come so, back. All uh, right. So it could be Kyrie, something important. You like Kyrie Irving? Uh, to make more three pointers than Jason Tatum in Game One at money line odds of plus one hundred, right, Jesse? Okay, here we go. That Jesse, is correct. Jesse's got one more prop, uh, so stay tuned for that. But in the interim, while he straightens out his phone issues, uh, Sean's going to take it away, and he's got a winning side in this game, and uh, we're all ears here, Sean. You know, like I think the the, the thought process here is going to be: is it rest versus rust? But both teams are what on seven and ten game layoffs. I, I don't think that's going to be an issue here. You have a team in Dallas who, you know, we've liked Dallas, Ross. We like them. We're yeah. going back to the Clipper game. We were high on Dallas because yeah. of their uh, Luca uh, Kyrie combo and the fact that they made a nice trade to get some defense in there. And well, it's kind of, they, they look flat out terrible in some of those games versus the Clippers. Like, Oh my God, how are these guys going to win a game? They're, you know, it looks horrible, but listen, defense got them past the Clippers, took them past, <laughs> The Thunder, hello, uh, Minnesota. I, I like the points here with Dallas. Now, I know it's going to be, oh, the Celtics are written in stone here. And the line does look a little high, six and a half, right? I mean, let's be honest. The Celtics, yeah. not that it was, it was sure it was an easier path. That's kind of cut and dry. You're playing teams that are missing superstars that are out of a conference that we all agree was significantly worse off than the, uh, Western Conference. I mean, Dallas beat a bunch of 50-win teams, and these guys are beating teams that had nobody missing guys. And oh, well, Porzingis was out. I got two guys here. And again, am I am I slightly concerned with that six and a half? Not really. They were laying ten to everybody else, and, and fourteen spots. So this makes sense. People, if you forget, the Celtics were favored to win the title back in September. This is not a shocker. They're here. The shockers at the Mavericks are here. But you're gonna give me these kind of points with two guys. And I think Jesse brought up Luca's uh, European dominance and being in big games and stuff like that and not shying away from the action. Was that Ross? Oh, Ross talked about it. I'm sorry. So it was Ross bringing up his people forget that this guy's a, a pro baller since he's a teenager in games. It's not the NBA Finals, but they're not joke games in some rec league. And Kyrie, uh, you could argue, won the championship for LeBron and the Cavaliers that series. So – what has Boston done? I've seen them choke and not get to the conference finals or the the, the NBA finals 
in five of the last seven years or whatever. They were here, what, once? So I'm not sold. You're going to give me six and a half with two guys who can single-handedly probably – one's the best guy on the floor. I know Luke is the best guy on the floor no matter what. And Kyrie – Maybe second best. I'm, I'm taking the points. It's SFM. Probably money line the first two games too. I think uh, I think it's worth a shot. They'll steal one up there in Boston. Both teams yeah. win on the road. They'll get one here. Yeah, and what he's saying too, folks, is you're going to get a sizable money line underdog price on Dallas, and all you need to do is one win one of the two. And let's not forget um, the Celtics lost uh, a game at home in the first two series against Indiana. I don't believe they did. I think their loss occurred at Indiana, if I'm not mistaken, Sean. Uh, but in any event, it, it certainly makes a lot of sense to me. By the way, Sean, I hope you like my new chair because it looks like I got ears like Spock since you're a Star Trek fan. You know, my that's wife. A seri- that's a serious gaming chair, it looks like. There. You should yeah, be playing. Uh, uh, it's it's ergonomics, you know. Um, I've had some back issues, and my wife spent three hundred dollars on a chair for me, <laughs> so I got to I got to use it. So you know what happens when you get old, man. It sucks. I get it. Yeah. Any event, Sean likes the Dallas Mavericks in Game One plus the six and a half over the Boston Celtics. Jesse, you got everything straightened out, buddy? Yeah, I got plenty to say about the Dallas Mavericks because okay. I've been putting it out there on on social media on Twitter and saying that I think Dallas has got a pretty good chance. I've been saying for a while that I think the Celtics are overvalued. And, uh, you know, you can't just go out there and say that without people hitting you back pretty hard. There's a lot of lot of Celtics fans around, and the Celtics were the best team in the NBA. They are the favorite. And, of course, they're going to have a lot of support from the betting public. But uh, I've got a few, I think, nice nuggets of information for you guys. Uh, how about best records in the NBA since the All-Star break? Uh, Boston did have the best record in the NBA since the All-Star break, but Dallas had the third best record, only four games behind Boston, and of course, playing in the much tougher Western Conference. So there's that. Let me ask you this question. Of the three teams that Boston played to get here, which one of those teams would have even made the playoffs in the Western Conference? Ah. I would say that Indiana might have been a play-in tournament team. No? Well, they had 47 wins, and the play-in teams in the West had 47 wins. Yeah. Um, you got you got to assume if they were playing a Western Conference schedule, they wouldn't have gotten to 47 wins. Um, okay. and, if, and, and that is evidenced by the fact that you look at their, uh, their in-conference record, they were plus, you know, yeah. plus 12 yeah. games, and their out-of-conference record, they were – 500 or less. And, and that goes for all three teams that they played. Uh, all, all of their wins came in within conference and uh, their out of conference record was inferior to their in conference record because the West is best and they're, they, it's not really up. For well, what debate, you're telling us is none, none of the three teams that Boston played in the first three Cleveland. Uh, I mean, where did Cleveland, where, where would have 48 wins for Cleveland Okay. Like I said, the, the play in the play in teams in the West had forty seven wins. You know, would Cleveland yeah. have made the playoffs in in the West? You could say you could maybe make an argument they they would, but you couldn't you couldn't take it for granted. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're looking at Sean made a good point. I mean, every every in the first three series, uh, I don't think Boston was less than an eight and a half point favorite at home in any any one of those series. And and here they are, a six and a half point favorite. Uh, their lowest number is a home favorite in the postseason, and they're playing a number five seed out of the West. So that speaks to exactly what Jesse is alluding to. So, all right, Jesse, since we got you, um, what's your other prop that you got going on? It uh, involves Derek Lively the <laughs> second. Yeah, no surprise there. We're going back to the well, and I said it. I said if, if the bookmakers keep this number where it's at you got to keep on playing it. So Lively has gone over his PRA in five of his last six games. The only exception was when Carl Anthony Towns kicked him in the head in the first quarter and he got knocked out early. I think he had nine points. He was well on his way to going over in that game as well, had he not got injured. And then he comes back in game five. He plays 25 minutes, nine points, eight rebounds, three assists. And it's those assists that are key here because – The points and rebounds number for Lively, 15.5, PRA, 16.5. 
but the kid's averaging two assists per game over his last 11 games. When he plays 30 minutes a game, he's getting more than one assist per game very consistently. So they're giving you a bit of a bargain there with the PRA being only one higher than points and rebounds. And, you know, anytime the bookmakers are giving me a bargain, I'm uh, I'm going to take them up on it. Yeah, I mean, again, the one game that he missed in the series against uh, – who did they beat in the conference finals? Oklahoma Minnesota. State? Minnesota. Uh, the one game that he missed uh, it was a loss for Dallas. And do I think that's a coincidence? No, because I had mentioned that prior to uh, – it was game four of that series that uh, I, I thought the loss of Derek Lively, they were going to feel it a lot more uh, than they thought or that people, uh, they're not going to account for it as much as we were. So, uh, and, and, and it came to fruition, but he came back in game five and they were a totally different team. Now that's nothing against the guy Gafford, the other center for uh, Dallas, but I think the combination of those two guys, Sean, um, uh, makes – them a very dangerous opponent uh when you just have one guy and you got to go to a third string center or somebody a forward has to move to center to take up minutes uh they're not as good defensively and and Derek Lively the second I've said this on many occasions uh much better offensive player in terms of versatility than Gafford is uh so he presents opposing defenses a hell of a lot more problems than Gafford does uh having said that Sean uh, I, I know that he missed that one game when he got kicked in the head, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, that's my problem. Uh, when I got kicked in the head when I was younger, I, I stayed in the game, not to myself. <laughs> anyway, go ahead, John. No, I like the um, – you're getting a prop that's the, for what, what, 15 and a half for his points and rebounds, and he needs a assist, and he's getting two. I like – not, not only that reason, I would just look at it as the point of for Dallas to win this, they're the sizable underdogs for the series. They're going to need the third guy to, to step up and have more than 12 points and four rebounds or something. He's going to have to come in and have – hold on, i got to clear my throat here. Yeah, it's about – He's going to have to come players. in and have a 17-point, yeah. you know, 15 to 20-point games for them to, to, to go over to home. So I – you find that third guy, and here Jesse's going with the Mavericks. I mean, whether it's White on um, Boston, or if you think Porzingis getting back in the mix will do something. I mean, for me, it'd be Porzingis Ungers. You know, he's coming back. They're going to force him in. I'd look at Unger's that. But who's that guy who's going to catapult the two superstars to the championship? You know, there's going to be someone else doing the dirty work that you're un- the unheralded guy. I like. I like. Uh, Derek Lively's spot here, yes. Yeah, I'm I'm a little surprised he's only averaging two assists per game because, Jesse, I think that's a pretty deceiving number because he distributes the ball very well from – he comes out to the top of the – near the foul line a lot of times against pressure uh, where teams were trying to double-team their guards and he comes out to the foul line as, as a release point and uh, he distributes the ball awfully well, but I think that's a very underrated statistic and, and uh, or undeceiving statistic, and it wouldn't shock me at all if he even exceeds that two assists per game in the finals, but we'll see. But that's to me, this is a great play. Derek Lively, uh, the second, rebounds, points, and assists, over 16-and-a-half. Jesse always cite and all, also cites the fact that he thinks Kyrie Irvin – even though he's getting one less three-point shot attempt during the postseason than Jason Tatum, he's hitting 42%. Tatum's hitting 29%. So he likes Irving to make more three-pointers in game one than Jason Tatum, and that's at even money, plus 100. Um, And, Sean, he likes the Dallas Mavericks, and he points out, uh, and Jesse added some good points as to why it makes sense to take Dallas uh, plus six and a half in game one. I'm going to look at the first half total for the Boston Celtics in game one. And uh, I've been zeroing in on these first half totals, but this time I'm just looking at one team, and that's the Celtics. Uh, their first half total in this game is 57, guys. These teams have met four times since last year, and Boston has scored 64 or more in the first half on each one of those occasions, including. 66 and 65 points in the two regular season meetings this year. This is also a Celtics team that scored 57 points or more in 38 of 49 at home 
And uh, that's 77.6% of the time. I should specify 57 or more in the first half in 38 of 49 home games. 77.6% of the time. Boston has also scored in game one of series during the postseason. They played three game ones. They've scored 60, 59, and 64 points. Now, I realize that the level of competition has risen here in the finals. We just talked about that, but that's worth noting as well. Also, uh, Sean brought up both teams being possibly being rusty. Uh, I looked at both of these teams off three or more days of rest this year. Boston has had six games where they played with three or more days of rest, and they scored 59 or more in the first half on each occasion. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks have played seven games with three days or more of rest. And uh, if they're rusty, it's on the defensive end because they allowed 62 or more in five of those seven games in the first half when playing on three or more uh, days of rest. And Boston, by the way, they've scored 57 points or more in the first half in six of their seven postseason home games. I know that I've been professing that, um, and Sean brought it up as well, and it's a good point, that Dallas has is, is been very good in the postseason for the most part um, in terms of defensively. And I, I have professed that I thought uh, they were the be- they've been the best defensive team in the NBA overall over the last quarter of the season, which coincides with the two trades they made and two acquisitions they brought in. But if there's going to be any um, defense, if defense is going to be lacking in any game of a series, I always tend to believe it's going to be early in the series as opposed to later, because as a series develops and gets later, especially if it's an evenly played series, like I think this one will be, I think you'll see more of low scoring games as the series moves on, as opposed to what we're seeing uh, in, in game one of this series. And I, I just can't ignore all that data uh, that supports Boston going over the total of 57 in the first half, Jesse. Yeah, well, look at game one against the Pacers. Um, the yeah. Celtics didn't. The Celtics scored plenty in that game as well, but uh, it was a high-scoring game. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was certainly the defense that was lacking and not the uh, not the offense in that game one after a bit of a layoff. So I, I agree with you. Higher scores early in the series lower scores later in the series. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's going to be hard to, uh, once they've played a few games, they've got the, they can tighten up the game plan and say, this is how we're going to deal with this. When they make this, when they switch this way, we're going to counter this way. Um, you know, and they're not going to have that dialed in, in game one in the first half. Yeah. I, um, Jesse, another one of these situations that I've been talking about and Sean as well, uh, I've been talking with you guys as well. Gentlemen, uh, I have to leave right now. I'm sorry. So I'm, okay. I got okay. uh, my kids are at a camp and we just got a um, a warning here. It's pouring and there's like a tornado coming. I got to go. Okay. Them. All right. Go ahead, Sean. Good luck. <clears throat> Be safe. Um, one of those situations again, Jesse, where um, the team total uh, or the total for the first half is one ten and a half. <clears throat> And uh, the total for the game is 214 and a half, which far exceeds the 50% range. And uh, again, if I was going to lean toward a first half total, being that I like Boston to go over 57, I would also have a small lean on the first half going over the total. Now, if, if indeed that first half total goes under the total, I would leave it alone completely, folks. But if it exceeds the 110 and a half, in the first half is is the game total in the first half. Uh, I would you're gonna get a better number to go under than two fourteen and a half by a live bet at halftime. Does that make sense to you, Jess? Makes sense to me, and it seems to be the things that legends are made out of, Ross. When you when you can hit two totals in one game, which you've been doing a few times lately, uh, yeah, you you really make a name for yourself. I did it once, okay. I did it once in the second time. I won the first half total. And I missed the halftime live bet by half a point. It was, it was, uh, I had said to go over two. I had the first half total under, which happened. And then I had, I said, make a halftime bet. You're going to get a better number. And the game total before the game started was 211 and a half. And we got 205 and a half at, at the half. 
And uh, I, I said to go over that number, and it landed on 205. We missed by half a point. But in any event, folks, it, it, you know, mark that down in, in your head or, or on a notepad that when you get a first-half number, whether it be a side or total, um, and it's more than 51% of the game total, you want to look at using the over in the first half. If it's 49% or less, of the game total, I look to use the under in the first half. And again, it's not a no-brainer theory. There's a lot of things. I think too many times we talk about stuff like this, and we know both teams are at full strength here, Jesse, and people write it down and think this is just what I'm going to do going forward without thinking about anything else and tell the folks exactly you think the same way as I do on this one. You have to have a hell of a lot more evidence than just that theory. Yeah, I mean, I've been getting a lot of people hitting me up and saying uh, home teams have been dominant in game one of the NBA finals historically, uh, you know. And and, uh, you think about that, though, and while the the home team in the NBA finals had the better record throughout the regular season, they're they're normally the better team. There's usually a a solid argument. So it's not surprising that that trend exists. But I think you've got to weigh all the variables, like I said, I, I did a bit more research and I saw that uh, teams from the Western Conference have won uh, 16 of the last 24 finals. So uh, Western Conference teams are winning at a two to one rate over the last 24 years. So uh, the, and that sort of flies in the face of the, the home team trend. So, that, you know, it, yeah. you don't want to ever lean into one trend. You want to do your homework and get all your bases covered and, and look at all the all the details before you, you come up with a conclusion. Well, we got nothing on Dallas in that regard because Dallas opened up their first three series all on the road, uh, playing against higher seeded teams. Boston has played three series. All game ones were at home. Obviously, they were number one seed. Um, they led at the half in two of those games. And the other one, which is the Indiana game that uh, Jesse brought up, the high scoring first half in that game, 64 64 so they covered two to three again folks um you know those are all fine and dandy and i've talked about pertinent and impertinent team trends but i think what you're hearing from me and jesse is you have to have more than just a specific trend even if the trend makes sense and it's pertinent you want to make sure you got other supporting information uh that goes along with it and jesse likes to call it our evidence sheet and for example, these are my notes on today's game that I'm discussing with you right now. And as you can see, and when I did my analysis, I gave you several reasons why uh, uh, that I like the game. And uh, Jesse, I'm sure you agree with that. Yeah, I think anytime you're leaning into a trend, you want to try, you want to do your best to debunk that trend and say, what, what can I, what kind of information can I find out that's going to lead me to believe this trend is not valid? And if you know, if you go through all everything and all the details, and you come up empty, and you can't debunk it, and, and you find a bunch of uh, a bunch of factors that are going to support that trend, then by all means, uh, home favorites, let it let her fly. But uh, don't don't just take it for granted that that's that's uh, the be all and end all is one one good trend that you that sounds great. Um, you know, because often there's a lot more behind the scenes that you need to take take account of. I've been debunked on my whole entire life and I've overcome <laughs> adversity. And one person I wouldn't debunk is uh, Jesse Shul with his picks. And Jesse, tell the folks a little bit about what you may have coming up tonight or uh, what you might have uh, in your game one for tomorrow in the NBA finals and uh, going forward. Yeah, I do have a pick listed for game one of the NBA finals. Uh, I haven't posted a CFL play yet, but the CFL season starts, I believe it's tomorrow, with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers hosting the Montreal Alouettes, which is a rematch of the Grey Cup last year. And I'm excited about the start of the CFL season. We got the uh, European Championships in soccer coming up. I'm a guy that's interested in all those sports. And uh, the month of June, for some, is going to be quiet. For me, it's going to be... a, a lot of a lot of things going on, a lot of positive things going on. Um, summer summer heat wave for me in the picks. I'm sure. Yeah, Jesse will have some prop plays on the rouges in uh, the Canadian Football <laughs> League. In any event, 
Uh, you can find me at gamblersworld.net. Don't forget, folks, me and Jesse and the rest of the great handicappers. Right now, $99 will get you the whole uh, NBA Finals from any one of us. And that's a guaranteed package, folks, because it's 30 days or fewer. So not only are we giving you a great price, $99, but we're also telling you that if we don't make a profit for you throughout the course of the NBA Finals, you're going to get a $99 credit and uh, or whatever you pay that their purchase, and you're going to be able to use it at any time you wish on any can- handicapper in which you uh, desire. So, again, take advantage of that offer, folks. My NBA playoff selections uh, since 2022 have been on fire, folks. Um, it's uh, one, it's the record is 115 and 70, uh, 62 percent. Uh, that includes 38 and 23 this year. Uh, my NBA overall uh, making a, a killing since last April, uh, up over 70 units. My major league baseball picks are starting to heat up, folks. Uh, seven and three the last three days in major league baseball. Uh, seven and two the last three days with my major league baseball totals. So all you can get all my picks and all Jesse's picks, our subscription plans, our NBA finals package right over at gamblersworld.net. We will be back tomorrow. I'll be joined by Chip Cherimbus and Doug Upstone. Jesse and Sean will be back with me on Friday for our, our live show. And uh, I think we'll be talking about game two, the NBA finals then. Tomorrow we'll be talking some baseball. Until then, folks, don't forget to give us a like and also subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on that alert notification bell. Jesse, uh, I I stole your thunder a little bit, but you could still do it. And we tell them a little more emphatically what they should do with that like button. Smash that like button. Smash that like button, folks. Until the next time, for Jesse Shule, uh, Sean Higgs, and... Ross Benjamin, take care and God bless, folks.